I've been focused on the bag, so don't play with me. Just because I fucked a couple nights, don't mean you stay with me. It ain't like if I go get a sentence, you gon' wait for me. I know. Top down, stand up on the pedal, Brody racing. Yeah. Tell him I'ma blow me like a blunt, baby face. Him. I can see the smirk from the thoughts of Jesse yeah. Racing. Yeah. Nigga, go ahead, so, welcome thing, back you know. to my channel. I want to do a little different video this week. Not a vlog because one shit popping last week. I want to talk about how do you ask a disabled person a question or somebody who has a chronic illness and because I've been getting this ever since I've been a little bit more open with my disability and like what's been going on people ask a lot of questions but they don't know how to ask that people come off rude they they say stuff that they think is like helpful or encouraging or whatever I have a couple of questions that i asked on my instagram story a couple of people asked some questions that they wanted to know about my illness specifically or chronic illness in general and we'll get into that but i did want to recap from what was going on last week um so i got new new knee braces and they fail they don't they won't stay on my leg the doctor did say i have cone shaped legs so they're gonna try the custom braces and the guy literally tried to the, the knee brace guy not he's not a doctor or a health professional he's trying to talk me out of getting knee, like getting custom knee braces because I have to wear them bilateral which means on both legs so I'm like well figure something out the wind is going crazy outside like it literally blew our grill like our grill was like like this we came home, it was like this. <laughs> what the heck? We'll see what happens with the knee braces. On to how not to talk to chronically ill people. Because so, I have like a lot of people who just say crazy stuff to me. First instinct is to sock them. Okay, but then I'd be like, no. Because <laughs> like, if you're chronically ill, if you have MS or uh, fibromyalgia or rheumatoid arthritis or any kind of lupus any anything like that you know that people say some dumb stuff to you people who are able-bodied really don't understand in their brain <laughs> they don't understand in their mind they can't fathom even having to wake up with something that's like the biggest inconvenience is your body not working so they just can't even fathom they try to put themselves in the same mind space but they can't then you get the stories of oh my friend had that and they cured her by doing a b and c which is usually some bull like essential oils, yoga, gluten free, stuff like that. They always like try to throw that kind of like foo foo kind of stuff in your face. And they're like, oh, my friend went vegan and she cured her fibromyalgia. Or my uncle rubbed peppermint oil all over his body every day and it cured his rheumatoid arthritis. What I really hate is like I have a genetic condition so people they like to try to tell me stuff they be like oh oh you you know you should get the shots because I told them like my knees dislocate and I have bad knees and like my wrists are all messed up and my ankles they be like oh why don't you just get the shots I'm like it's genetic I'm like I have a genetic problem with my collagen in my body like it doesn't not gonna they go oh collagen oh um hmm i seen that in the 
I seen some collagen in the uh, vitamin aisle. My body doesn't work. Like, society is already ableist, so that just adds on to the um, like able able body people think that they're entitled to like like give you unsolicited medical advice when you have a plan with your doctor. <laughs> it's just funny because it's like I be waiting for somebody to say something to me. They, they come with the unsolicited medical advice, the yoga, oh, you should just walk, you should just work out. Girl, on to the question. Can you see how passionate I am about this? People are just... The, okay, what I can't stand with, when it comes to like chronic illness, the when will you be better or get better soon. Just Google the word chronic. Chronic. Persistent, long lasting in its effects or a disease that comes with time. That's your answer right there. It's a chronic illness, it doesn't go away. And if somebody <clears throat> that you love or care about gets diagnosed with something, I feel like the first thing you should do is get your tail on Google. Say, look, I Google what this is. I did 30 minutes of research. It takes 30 minutes for you to get on the phone, get on Google, and say, look, I'm a I don't know nothing about this. <laughs> so you can really get the understanding because that's really what the issue is, is that able-bodied people lack understanding of illnesses. And the reality is, is that as everybody gets older, you're going to acquire some kind of chronic illness in your, in your lifetime. Like, that's just how it goes. I do want to talk about, like, when it comes to how chronically ill people medicate, because... We have a set of medications that our doctor, usually your doctor prescribe you something. Well, usually pain medicators. Then you have autoimmune medication or something to regulate what's going on in your body, whatever your disorder is. Then you have, so I know I have to take a bunch of um, supplements that are prescribed because they're on another level than what you get on over the counter. Like the vitamin D I take is the highest dose that they can give you to the point where I can only take it once a week. And it's like when you're older, people understand like when you're in your 50s, 60s, whatever. But when you're my age and your 20s, 30s, and you're carrying around pill boxes, people be like, it's kind of a stigma with that. I never had a problem with that, but I know other people have had an issue with people saying that they're like a pill head or like addicted or something and it's just not true people have issues with their body like, and they need to regulate it so they can stay alive period period okay period <laughs> i medicate using cannabis and that's what works for me a lot i know a lot of people who are chronically ill do some of them are like more open with it so not really i don't care i wear it on my chest i'd be like that's what i do i feel like it's the best thing that could have ever happened to me because i've been on narcos and it just doesn't work <laughs> it, just, it either it takes the pain of the pain away and it gives me anxiety or it only dulls the pain a little bit and it's giving me anxiety or it's knocking me out and I don't want to be knocked out. I have some examples of how you ask chronically ill people questions correctly. I feel like people have empathy but they just like don't understand really what's going on until they really understand it. Like some people it takes them seeing you walking with a cane, seeing you walking with a walker 
to like really like get the gravity of the situation some of them you just gotta say oh i have this and they're like on board and then some people are usually in denial about like, like especially if like if you didn't if you weren't born with something like usually parents or grandparents have like this denial factor where they're like oh you're not sick there's nothing wrong with you blah 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 you just want uh attention oh that's the one i can't stand oh you just want attention i don't want anybody looking at me somebody stares at me in the store they're getting cussed out i mean like this who are you looking at I'll be like, yeah, I just stood up. Yeah, I can walk. Like today at the store. Today at the store. This lady, I'm like in the little amigo. And it's like, my back is fucking hurting me. My legs are hurting me. I look cute. Yes, I'm cute. Yes, I'm 23. Miss old raggedy. Usually older people. Older people, like they think they're the only ones who can be disabled. How you ask a question is just your first rule is to remember that the person with the illness ain't your encyclopedia. You have to take the initiative. Do that first. Then the questions that you have after that usually are like very like educated questions and like you're on the next level of knowing and then the person that you're talking to will be more open to talk about that situation or their illness with you because they're gonna be like oh wow you really like yeah I want to answer some of your questions you actually went and did some research <laughs> wow and then how you ask them is just don't be like how do you feel today I'll be like uh still shitty like just act regular but like just be cool a better question would be like just don't ask that just be like how are you or you know what i'm saying but if you like really if the person if the person looks like they struggling don't be like you know like you know they have something going on with don't ignore it but just like be like oh i i like when people be like oh like you good like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what people do with me. They just be like, oh, you good? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know. No, I'm like, oh, I got it. If you got a friend that's got a chronic illness and they stubborn like that. <laughs> got a chronic illness and they stubborn like that. Just be like, just do it. Gary just they take stuff out of my hand. He's like, yeah, I'm, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, what? I'll be like, uh, I was doing that. <laughs> then he'd be like, go sit down somewhere. Like, don't make it weird. Just don't make it weird. If you don't make it weird, and you actually, but it's like, if it's somebody you don't know, then it's kind of like hard to gauge. But I feel like if you, if it's somebody you don't know, in your head, remember, people have disabilities and people could be deaf, hard of hearing, blind, partially blind. You have to just think. Take every person and be like, uh, there's more, every person has more than meets the eye going on with them. So just be kind and don't be an a-hole. Ask people for if they need help ads if you are curious about something and you know the person usually they won't have a problem answering a question you know what i'm saying like just don't be rude about it and you know what i'm saying put your best foot forward like we learn manners in kindergarten and i just feel like a lot of people who don't have disabilities like lose a lot of their empathy and stuff because I feel like when you have these kind of problems like disability and stuff you think about stuff on another level and you think about how 
the world could be better and you have a little bit more patience and you have a little bit more empathy because you're going through something so somebody else going through something you like I, I get it like I'd be like I get it bro that's how you ask the question you just don't be an asshole do a little research first because there's a lot of stuff you could just google like I said earlier chronically ill people and disabled people and people who have illnesses and you know what I'm saying issues with their body are not obligated to be your encyclopedia we have so many resources like google that you can use watch a, a couple of videos on youtube about how my life is and that's why i was like i'm gonna start making videos myself because i feel like it's really gonna help me to be able to open up a little bit more and Sometimes I be needed to just let this stuff up. I got a couple of questions from my Instagram. The first one was, what is EDS? How are you diagnosed with it? And is it something that can be healed? Well, I think I answered that last question earlier. It's genetic. So EDS is, is a series of connective tissue disorders. It's like 13 types. They say, I feel I don't want to say it's rare I feel like it's rarely diagnosed and I have a hypermobility type which is type 3 and it's degenerative so it's not getting better it's getting worse it won't ever go back I won't ever go back to how it was it's always gonna get worse every i feel like the diagnosis for it depends on what type you have if there's just if they are suspecting like classical or vascular you got to get a genetic test it's a genetic test for that it's no genetic test for hypermobility type so they really just like look at the symptoms you know they give you a a score when they suspect it, it's called the, I don't even know how to, I don't know how to um, pronounce, I've never, ever since I got this score, i never been able to pronounce, let me, let me see if I can get them to pronounce this. Baton score, which assesses Baton, generalized. The Baton score, so pretty much they give you this test of like each joint to see how flexible it is and i think i got a, a nine out of i think the only thing is my elbows don't uh, they kind of do hyper extend oh, it hurts. <laughs> they do kind of hyper extend but they have you go like this to see if your thumb touches they do it on each side this one hurts so i'm not gonna do that one but they do this they have you do something with your hand your arms behind your back you do like a praying arms behind your back i can do that they have you touch the floor with their palms i can do that <laughs> oh the pinky the pinky they take they have you put your take your pinky past a 90 degree angle so your You see that? It, it probably could go a little bit farther. So, <laughs> um, they give you the score. Then they be like, oh, like you might, cause sometimes like hypermobility is a, is a spectrum uh, disorder with EDS being like the worst you can get. So they just, they go along with the symptoms. They give you the baiting score. They do all of this stuff that's how you get diagnosed with EDS and it was like a three questions in one next question what were the symptoms you began to experience it actually started in high school I always been flexible and when I asked my mom about it she told me that I went from being bow-legged to being knock me I've always been the chubby kid but I've always been able to do like all my tumbling and stuff during cheer, I could always 
I was right up there with the skinny girls. Yeah, sophomore year, junior year, doing uh, track and musicals and like always having a problem with my freaking knees hurting. I was just in pain and they just like would be like, oh, you, you, you just, you're just fat. Like pretty much they were just like, you're fat, but I am doing extra activity. Like we did a hairspray musical and the hairspray musical was so physically demanding. It was just like, they were still telling me the same stuff. And I'm like, bro, I am literally doing a Broadway show. <laughs> I'm in a junior year of high school. When I got out of high school, my um, rheumatologist was like, I suspect I was Dan Wilson. Like your joints are so hypermobile. Your pain makes sense. I was like, thank you. Like Jesus. And they just kind of like progressed from sophomore year into junior year college was the worst thing that could have ever happened to me i was like my freaking i think college and working really like working 40 hours and standing on my feet cashiering and serving well it was it really it really did a doozy on my body let's just say that um have i ever dealt with discrimination i just deal with a lot of old uh people who think i don't deserve to use a cart at the store that's only kind of i feel like the, the most discrimination I, I i get is like because of my weight and they don't they see my weight as like something that they could use against me when i need help with my illness i bet you if i help, had help in, with my illness back sophomore junior year i wouldn't need bilateral knee braces now and i wouldn't have osteoporosis and osteoarthritis i'm like telling them i'm like i want to go back you know how much i want to freaking be as active as i was in high school that shit was the best like shit of my life i want to be able to help my niece with her gymnastics i tried to do a stand handstand i was like okay i'm gonna do it i'm gonna try I, I literally tried to do a handstand and my shoulder was so like hard as a rock out of place for a week. How do I find happiness? Well, happiness is a very up and down thing when you have a chronic illness, but I'm trying to like keep it more on the steady by making videos, setting goals for myself, uh, posting on Instagram and interacting with the people that I follow on Instagram trying to not shut myself off from the world because it's kind of hard when you like laying in the bed all the time but it's just like I try to call my best friends I'd be like girl call me today text me <laughs> I started I, you got to lean on your friends a little bit more and the people who actually care like you got to talk to people like especially in this pandemic FaceTime is like my favorite you got to fall in love with this fucking shithole of a body you got you gotta <laughs> I talk to my body you know you're doing the most you are doing the most and you need to stop that kind of stuff and then it makes me laugh and then it'll make gary laugh and we just like come up with different stuff you gotta surround yourself self with cute things like i got a zebra blanket i have a pet zebra miss zebby she Gary say she that she got an evil eye. I feel like she gotta have a little bit of an evil eye because she's an EDS zebra. So I got zebra Ugg shoes. So it just kind of like makes you feel better. Then I got my cane. I named her Abby. I used to keep her folded up and hidden. And I don't do that anymore. I have a disability, literally, if you when you're a teenager you go through this thing with your self-esteem and you like 
you gotta like build up your style and your self-esteem well when you get well when you start to realize you have a disability and then you get diagnosed and stuff um you really have to do that all over again <laughs> you have to find yourself find your self-esteem all over again like that's why it's so important for people able-bodied people in society to realize that disabled people exist we're here we are also sexy witty funny kind of people yeah so i think that sums up how to ask a disabled person questions or somebody with a chronic illness i hope that this is very informative for you i'm really trying to make this channel fun and real i'm a real period so yeah if you could subscribe like this video click the bell so you can get notifications when i post comment below what you think my next video should be other than a vlog i'm gonna try to keep doing the vlogs but i think i'm gonna only do vlogs if something if something is happening but <sighs> love you guys get a sale